to you. God bless you. Say, welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel. Welcome to this family Bible study hour. We're ready to get back into our Father's Word. We're going to do chapter 29, the great book of Genesis. Remember Genesis in the beginning. If you don't really understand the beginning, there's no way you're ever going to understand the end. So Genesis becomes a very important book. It gives the genealogy, it's about one man's family and all peoples we would come in contact with as it related to bringing forth the Christ child who is the Savior of all. Abraham meaning the blessing or the father of many nations, or I could even say all nations. So thus making it important to all peoples that they understand how it happened in the beginning. All right, with that having been said, a word of wisdom from our father. Remember that uh, Jacob has left um, his home with his father and mother and has gone to uh, Rebecca's brother Laban's area, hopefully to meet someone of their own kindred and to whom he would be married through which would come that Christ child, which would be, if you would, the father of the 12 patriarchs. So, okay, with that said, verse 1, let's go with it. It reads, Then Jacob went on his journey, and he came into the land of the people of the east. This simply means the people, it could even be translated by the Euphrates. It doesn't mean all the way east to Asia but it means the children, people meaning children or sons or kindred, even if you would. Verse 2. And he looked and beheld, beheld uh, a well in the field. And lo, there were three flocks of sheep lying by it. For out of that well they watered the flocks. And a great stone, I mean a great stone, was upon the well's mouth. Now this agreement was among them. Some even feel, well, the stone was so great they had to wait till they all got there because it took them all to move it. Well, perhaps it was an agreement. But I'm sure that, um, that it did take normally more than one would move it. Verse 3. And thither were all the flocks gathered and they rolled the stone, meaning they, Malta, they rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the sheep and put the stone again upon the well's mouth in his place. And actually this would protect it from sand and trash and what have you. Verse 4. And Jacob said unto them, My brethren, whence be ye? And they said, Of Horan, are we? Who, who are you and where are you from? Yeah, verse 5. And he said unto them, Know ye Laban, the son of Nahor? And of course that would be Abraham's uh, youngest brother. And they said, We know him. Verse 6. And he said unto them, Is he well? Question. And they said, He is well. And behold, Rachel his daughter cometh with the sheep. In other words, it is befitting that Rachel would be the shepherd in her family. Usually the shepherd of a family was either a son or a daughter, and usually the youngest that was able to, you know, of the age that they could tend them. And, uh, but Rachel meaning you as sheep, she even carried that name. Was it a nickname that they called her this because she was good with the sheep? Well, usually names are given for a purpose. 17. I'm sorry, verse 7 rather. And he said, Lo, it is yet high day. Neither is it time that the cattle should be gathered together. What are ye the sheep and go and feed them? Now, you're going to find that these peoples were not as prosperous, perhaps, as they should be. And, and uh, Jacob was um, very shrewd, uh, and I don't mean that shrewd in the sense of subtlety, as many accuse him of. He was simply wise. 
it was too early to bring the sheep in for water. They were, that would be a lazy thing to do. When there were still many hours yet to feed those sheep, to put the weight on them, to grow the wool, and to help production. He said, what are you doing in here this early? Water them and get them on back out there. Now, this attitude, you're going to find out that Jacob was a great husbandman. By that I mean he was a great farmer and rancher and shepherd. He knew how to manage things. Where sometimes it seems that people let things slide. I don't know, in your own life today, that choice is yours. You can kind of let things slide or you can manage things to the best of your ability. And when you manage to the best of your ability, you happen to have a heavenly Father above that's looking down that's going to bless you in everything that you do, knowing that uh, you deserve that blessing. He keeps score and he knows. And then Laban immediately spots this and some might say, well, that was really rather presumptuous of him to just walk into camp. Well, they were his kinsmen. They had identified that they were of that people. Okay, so, so he makes the statement, verse eight. And they said, we cannot until all the flocks be gathered together, until they roll the stone from the well's mouth then, then we water the sheep. It still doesn't make any difference for what reason. Cattle that are not fed properly are not productive, all right? That is to say to, the, to a point of even being efficient. Verse 9, And while he yet spake with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for she kept them. And again, her name meaning you, uh, which is a virgin sheep, lamb, ten. And it came to pass when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother. Now understand that, that makes them cousins. His mother's brother and the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, that Jacob went near and rolled the stone from the well's mouth. He didn't need any help. He rolled the stone from the well's mouth. He had no help and watered the flock of Laban, his mother's brother. And some might say, well, it seems to me they might have objected here a total stranger comes in and just starts watering the flock. Well, how many people will argue with a man that can pick up a four or a 500 pound stone and move it by himself? You know, it doesn't, they're not necessarily going to put up much of an argument with him. He's kind of going to have his way, and he's already set the precedent that he's a good manager. Because being presumptuous as he was, he was only giving good advice. And uh, having seen the girl, maybe he was given extra strength because he immediately fell in love with that girl, Rachel. Uh, and uh, verse 11. And Jacob kissed Rachel, this was a custom of this area, and lifted up his voice and wept. It was with joy. Boy, he was thrilled, overjoyed. He had traveled all this distance. Maybe he had wondered, wonder what kind of woman I will find there to marry. Will she be attractive? Will I like her? And he's overjoyed because here's Rachel. And he is very pleased, even till it brought tears to his eyes. 12. And Jacob told Rachel that he was her father's brother. That brother, the Hebrew is a little bit vague when you get to kin. It means um, he was of, of her father's sister's, he was her, her um, rather, her father's sister's son, which makes them a brother as brethren go. And that he was Rebecca's son, and she ran and told her father. I mean, she trusted him, loved him too in return, because a shepherd will not leave their sheep unless they know that they are in good hands. So she could see his ability, did not even question it and left them with him and rushed on ahead, 13. And it came to pass when Laban heard the tidings of Jacob, his sister's son, that he ran to meet him. 
and embraced him and kissed him. Again, the custom of the area. And brought him to his house and he told Laban all these things. The, his travel, I wonder if he shared with him about the pillar, the stone of destiny. Probably did. Laban was a very subtle man. Laban knew and Laban, uh, he was fair. He was honest to the point that if you, as long as you didn't let him get away with something. He was a shrewd dealer. You had to, you had to really stay on top of it with Laban. All right, verse 14. And Laban said to him, Surely thou art my bone and my flesh. And he abode with him the space of a month. I don't imagine it took long for Laban to understand how uh, good, how very good with the knowledge and wisdom, but I would be falling short if I didn't say with the blessings of God made him a very productive individual in every way. Verse 15. And Laban said unto Jacob, Because thou art my brother, shouldest thou therefore serve me for naught? Uh, see what I mean? He is fair. You shouldn't work for me for nothing. Question. Tell me, what shall the way thy wages be? Question. 16. And Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah. And Leah means uh, weak or dim eyes. I know that's not very flattering. Nevertheless, that's what they called her. And probably um, with Rachel's eyes being s sparklers, uh, I'm sure that Leah was still a beautiful woman. But it's just that her eyes weren't as bright as, and the name of the younger was Rachel, which of course is you um, as in a, a female sheep. 17. Leah was tender-eyed, and that means uh, tender, the word in the Hebrew is weak. But Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. And there we go, 18. Jacob loved Rachel and said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, thy younger daughter. Now it was customary that you could have a Hebrew slave, but at the end of seven years, you had to let him go. And in a sense, you can take on that, that he would serve him seven years. And of course, Jacob is in no hurry to return home because he knows that Esau, his brother, has already sworn that he's going to kill him. Because Esau, even though he sold his birthright for that bowl of, of pottage, that red pottage with Esau being the red one, then certainly um, uh, he didn't have that much to complain about. Verse 19, And Laban said, It is better that I give her to thee than that I should give her to another man. Abide with me, or that's a way of saying, you got a deal, buddy. We're going to work it just exactly that way. And Laban agreed to that. Again, Laban, Laban is kind of slick. you got to watch him. 20. And Jacob served seven years for Rachel. I repeat, for Rachel. And they seemed unto him but a few days for the love he had to her. I mean, the man was in love. Remember his action and reaction at the well with the tears of joy. I mean, he, he had not only found a wife of kindred, but he'd also found a wife that he instantly fell in love with. Love at first sight. 21. And Jacob said unto Laban, Give me my, as the seven years pass now, give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled that I may go in unto her. 22. And Laban, old, old Swifty here, and Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. And I'm sure that the wine was flowing and everybody's celebrating and most of all probably Jacob is the happiest because the way he loved that girl, my. 23. And it came to pass in the evening that he took Leah, his daughter, and that was the older one, and brought her to him and he went in unto her. 
No, I, I have to think that because of the party, that Jacob uh, was not up to 100% par with his celebration and his gladness. It had been a long seven years. It's time to celebrate because tonight I am allowed to take Rachel for my wife, that one I love so much. Unfortunately, it wasn't Rachel. 24. And Laban gave unto his daughter Leah Zilpha his maid for her and handmaid. I mean, this was uh, trickling in the Hebrew, but this was customary also. I mean, he wasn't really an overly rich man, but uh, he was, he was, as we would say in this generation, well fixed, all right? 25. And it came to pass that in the morning, behold, uh-oh, it was Leah. And he said to Laban, what is this thou hast done unto me? Did not I serve with thee for Rachel? Wherefore then hast thou beguiled me? I'm sure that he was one unhappy camper because after the seven years, Laban, he's kind of lied to, but watch Laban. He's slick. Listen to this, 26. And Laban said, Ooh, it must not be so done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. It's not customary. How dare you ask me to do it against the rules of my country. So you see, he knew he had broke his promise and he has every intention of keeping his promise. But at the same time, Things are looking a lot better, you know, the, all the fence posts that were broken down, they're all fixed up, you know, and, and uh, the, the place just looks so much better, and hey, I mean, you know, the shekels are rolling in a little faster. We, we're going to keep this boy around a while. I mean, he's making things look good. And you might say, well, aren't you kind of adding to the scripture? No, I think I know Jacob. And I know what a difference a real um, handyman can make. And certainly um, Laban does also. Verse 27. So Laban continues, Fulfill her week. In other words, a, a, the marriage feast would go seven days. Fill her week. And we will give thee this also for the service which thou shalt serve with me yet seven other years. In other words, you continue the wedding with Leah. And when that's over with, I'm going to make your day. I'm going to give you Rachel to wife also. And then you owe me seven more years. So boy, think of how good the place is going to look by then. All right. So. Um, will Jacob, Jacob accept that? Well, of course he will. I mean, Rachel's the one he really loves. 28. And Jacob did so and fulfilled her week. And he gave him Rachel, his daughter, to wife also. He honored, he honored his promise. But he has Jacob tied up now for another seven years. And probably had the son-in-law of son-in-laws because this son-in-law would be the, patri the patriarch of the 12 uh, patriarchs that make up the tribes of Israel. Verse 29. And Laban gave to Rachel his daughter Bilhah. Uh, Bilhah means timid or um, even a little bashful if you would. She was, she was a bashful girl. His uh, handmaid to be her maid. So here old Jacob, when he had no one, now all of a sudden he has not one wife, but two, and two handmaids. Verse 30. And he went in also unto Rachel, and he loved also Rachel more than Leah. Now it's important that you pick up on that. He did love Leah, uh, but not the way he loved uh, Rachel, okay? Uh, I want, uh, he didn't hate Leah, that's the point I want to make and served with him yet seven other years. Verse 31. And when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, and this is the reason I made the prior statement, 
the word should translate love less. All right. He didn't actually, he did not hate her. It was simply that he did not love her as much as he loved Rachel. He opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. Amazing how our father intercedes at times. Um, love less or neglected and God interceded. Verse 32. But let, let, me, let me just insert another thought. Our father knows exactly what he's doing because he is creating the nation through which the Christ child will come. Okay, And it will not be mixed with Kenites or or the Raphim, which are the prodigy of fallen angels. It won't happen. Verse 32. And Leah conceived and bare a son, and she called his name Reuben. For she said, Surely the Lord hath looked upon my affliction. Now, therefore, my husband will love me. I'm sure there was a little bit of envy there between the, um, the sisters and and Reuben means uh, behold or see. It means look a son. That's what the name means. Verse 33. And she conceived and again and bare a son and said, Because the Lord hath heard that I was hated or loved less or was neglected, he hath therefore given me this son also. And she called his name Simeon. Uh, Simeon meaning a hearing, okay? Uh, verse 34. The Lord heard her, in other words. 34. And she conceived again in bare a son and said, Now this time will my husband be joined with me. It's important perhaps that you note how the 12 tribes received their names. So uh, remember them well. Joined being the word here, because I have borne him three sons. Therefore was his name called Levi. And Levi, of course, means joined. Levi would be the priest tribe. Thus the name joined, because joining in through the word of God. All right? Very befitting. Verse 35. And she conceived again and bare a son. And she said, now will I praise the Lord. Therefore, she called his name Judah and left bearing. In other words, her womb was dried temporary for that time. And of course, Judah means praise. And uh, through Judah would come the king line. Ultimately, um, the Christ child thought by many, but, but hear me. The Christ child came through both Levi and Judah because Mary's uh, father, being of the tribe of Judah, married a Levite of the daughters of Aaron, a cousin to Elizabeth, a full-blood Levite, married to uh, Zechariah the priest. Okay, you'll have that recorded in the book of Luke. So, thus far... Uh, we have the first sons, all these sons born to and through Leah. Chapter 30, verse 1, same thought, and we continue. And when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said unto Jacob, Give me children or else I die. In other words, life is not worth living unless I can have children. She was grieved. Okay, verse 2. And Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel. And he said, Am I God's stead? Do you think I'm God? Who hath uh, withheld from thee the fruit of the womb? In other words, she, he wasn't too worried about himself because Leah was doing quite well. He knew it was Rachel's womb. 3. And she said, Behold my maid Bilhah, go in unto her, and she shall bear upon my knees, that I may also have children by her. In other words, um, uh, that children be built by her. Um, and in a sense, I will adopt that child. Four. 
And she gave him Bilhah, her handmaid, to wife. And Jacob went in unto her. Five. And Bilhah conceived and bare Jacob a son. Got a whole string of boys going here, okay? Verse six. And Rachel said, God hath judged me and hath also heard my voice and hath given me a son. Therefore called she his name Dan. And of course, Dan means judging in the Hebrew tongue. Verse 7. As we get to 12, we work at it here, pay attention. When, by the, when we come to the 49th chapter in this great book, it's going to be very important that you remember these names because uh, it, it assists you in being able to affix the nations even to this day, the majority of them. Verse 7. And Bilhah, Rachel's maid, conceived again and bare Jacob a second son. Eight. And when Rachel said, with great wrestlings have I wrestled with my sister and I have prevailed and she called his name Naphtala which is my wrestlings verse 9 when Leah saw that she had left bearing she took Zilpha her maid and gave her Jacob to wife 10 and Zilpha Leah's maid bear Jacob a son. Eleven. And Leah said, A troop cometh. And she called his name Gad, which as you all know, Gad in the Hebrew tongue is a troop. And, you know, there's getting to be a lot of little patter, patter, patter around the place by this time. I mean, we've got kids all over the place here. as time going on. Twelve. And Zilpha, Leah's maid, bear Jacob a second son. 13. And Leah said, Happy am I, for the daughters will call me blessed. And she called his name Asher. And of course, Asher means happy, and upright, and a happy dude. Verse 14. And Reuben, this would be the eldest, Reuben went, into the, went uh, in the days of wheat harvest and found mandrakes in the field and brought them unto his mother Leah. Then Rachel said to Leah, Give me, I pray thee, of thy son's mandrakes. Mandrakes are a little difficult to explain. They were thought to be, uh, sometimes they're called everything in the East from Satan's apples to, uh, only it's really not an apple. As we think of an apple, it was a root that looked very much like a man, and I'll just leave it at that, all right? It was thought to be very helpful in producing children. 15. And she said unto her, Is it a small matter that thou hast taken my husband? Question. And wouldest thou take away my son's mandrakes also? And Rachel said, Therefore he shall lie with thee tonight for thy son's mandrakes. Evidently, um, um, Rachel gives way that the husband goes to Leah that night if she gets the mandrakes. In other words, she cut a bargain. Now, there's a lesson I want you to learn from this. If you have a problem... Satan's apples won't cut it, friend. Mandrakes won't cut it. God is the one that helps because it was God that dried up her womb because of, unfortunately, Jacob. Now, many might, uh, we, we could build a strong case here if you wanted to try sometimes against the father because actually Jacob and Rachel both had been kind of ripped off because they loved each other and that was the deal that she would be his wife. And it was Laban through his subtlety that brought Leah in. Leah says, you took my husband. Well, in a way, Leah's wrong because in a way, Leah took Rachel's husband. The, the, why am I doing this? So that you, to train you to look at all sides. And probably to help you recognize that God's in control anyway. And my point is, when confusion, selfishness, envy, 
and strife within brethren. Uh, and I'm certain you'll never get in this situation in a brotherhood, but understand what I'm saying. That, that uh, you do not want to look to mandrakes. They won't help. Look to God for your answers in his word and from him. And there you will find the answers. Nowhere else. Not with brand mandrakes. Not with roots that look like man. Because um, there is no way on this earth that a root that looked like a man could um, help anyone with anything other than, um, be that as it may. Next verse, please. 16. And Jacob came out of the field in the evening. And Leah went out to meet him and said, Thou must come in unto me. His life seemed to be a little bit prearranged here, all right? You got to come into me, for surely I have hired thee with my son's mandrakes. And he lay with her that night. So notice Jacob never argues with the situation. He didn't kick up his heels about having to go into those handmaids. He just marched right on in there. And, um, and uh, now um, Rachel uh, sold out on him and sold him to Leah for this night. And that's exactly what she's saying. I hired you, okay? Made a bargain for you tonight, buddy. 17. And God hearkened unto Leah and she conceived. Woo. And bare Jacob the fifth son. 18. And Leah said, God has given me my hire because I have given my maiden to my husband. And she called his name Ishakar. And do you know what Ishakar means? And hire, or of my wages. All right? So here we have, we come to the fifth, 19. And Leah conceived again and bare Jacob the sixth son. And verse 20, and Leah said, God hath endued me with a good dowry. Now will my husband dwell with me. He can finally, he's going to love me. He did anyway, understand, but less. Because I have borne him six sons. And she called his name Zebulon, uh, which means dwelling. And that was her dowry. That was her dwelling. And it would cause her husband to uh, dwell with her. Even, uh, spiritually, mentally, and otherwise, in love. 21. And afterwards she bare a daughter and called her name Dinah. Dinah, it's strange that they would name the girl that, but it means vindicated or, in a sense, judgment. Verse 22. And God remembered Rachel, finally at last, and God hearkened to her and opened her womb. Now, she will bring forth, of course, Jacob, I'm sorry, she will bring forth Joseph and Benjamin. And unfortunately for her, Benjamin, whom she would name Ben-Nami, which is to say, uh, son of my sorrow, which uh, uh, Jacob would later change to Benjamin, uh, son of my right hand, because it would bring about her death. And it is connected with the same place that the Christ child was born, which is to say Bethlehem. So these, it's important that you mentally become aware of these because through the names and through the promises and blessings God would give each of these tribes, it gives you a great uh, leverage to be able to spot them even in this generation. All right, don't miss the next lecture. Um, and don't forget that um, um, each family makes the whole unit Israel. In Isaac shall the seed be called. Okay, bless your heart. You listen a moment, won't you please? Welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel. Welcome to this family Bible study hour. We, we've been waiting on you and we're ready to get into our Father's Word. We left uh, Rachel trying to deal Leah out of some mandrakes, and she did. And Leah ends up with two more children, and uh, Rachel 
her thinking about mandrakes didn't help her a bit. So always remember, um, mythology and fiction will get you nowhere. Our father will take you everywhere. She should have talked to him. So we almost have the 12 children. And finally, as we pick up in today's lecture, we're going to see.